This is a tutorial on reciprocal functions. A reciprocal function is just a function that has its variable in the denominator. If you've studied inverse variation, you'll know that inverse variation is an example of a reciprocal function because its variable x is in the denominator of this function. Here we're given the graph of y is equal to one over x and notice that this graph has asymptotes at x is equal to zero and that y is equal to zero. These asymptotes are lines on the graph that the graph can never touch or cross. These asymptotes come from the fact that if x was equal to zero in this equation, we would be dividing by zero, which would make this function undefined. So x can never equal zero in this function and that's where we get this vertical asymptote. Also notice that this equation y can never equal zero. And this is because there is no value that I can plug in for x that will make y is equal to zero. There's no number that I can divide one by to make it equal to zero. If x is very large then this fraction will be very small and our y will be very small. If x is very small, that will give us a very large y value. So because y and x can never equal zero in this function, that's where we get our asymptotes for this graph. Now reciprocal functions have a standard form in which they're written. And this standard form is y is equal to a divided by x minus h plus k. Here a, h, and k are all just constant values or numbers. So now let's investigate the effect that these constants have on the graph of our reciprocal function. The first constant that we're going to investigate is a. If our a is greater than one, we're going to stretch the graph of our reciprocal function. If our a is between zero and one, then we're going to shrink the graph of our reciprocal function. So here we're given the graph of several reciprocal functions with different a values. And we're going to compare these functions to our parent function y is equal to one over x. We're given the graph of y is equal to one over x. It's drawn in blue. And then next we'll compare the graph y is equal to five over x. Here our a is equal to five. And that means our a is greater than one. Notice, because our a is greater than one, we are stretching this graph. This graph has the same asymptotes as y is equal to one over x. It has the asymptotes where x is equal to zero and y is equal to zero. But notice that these points are further away from these asymptotes then in our parent function y is equal to one over x. That is because this graph has been stretched by a factor of five. And it's stretched because our a value is greater than one. Now let's look at the graph of y is equal to one over five x. And you can think of this as one fifth over x or zero point two over x. Here, our a value is between zero and one, or it's some fraction. And notice where this graph is drawn in green, it has the same asymptotes again, where x cannot equal zero and y cannot equal zero. But the points on this function are closer to the asymptotes than they are in our parent function of y is equal to one over x. That's because this graph has been shrunk by a factor of five, or its a value is one fifth. Now let's look and see what happens when our a value becomes negative. A coordinate axis can be divided into four quadrants. Quadrant one is when we have both positive y and x values. And then the quadrants are numbered counterclockwise as we go around our axis. 
So we have quadrant two, three, and four. Now when we graph the function y is equal to one over x, that graph has a tendency to be in quadrant one and quadrant three. Well let's graph these two functions, y is equal to one over x and y is equal to negative one over x. Notice that our parent function y is equal to one over x is graphed exactly where we thought it would be. But when we have y is equal to negative one over x, we're now graphed in the opposite quadrants. Before, we were in one and three. Now that we have a negative a value, our graph is in quadrants two and four. So if you have a negative a value, that just changes the quadrants that you graph in. Otherwise, your graph is exactly the same. It has the same asymptotes. In this case, x is equal to zero and y is equal to zero. So now let's investigate the effects that h and k have on our reciprocal functions. Remember, the standard form of a reciprocal function is y is equal to a over x minus h plus k. Now, each one of these three functions that we're given all have an a equal to one. My first function, or my parent function, is y is equal to one over x, and it's graphed here in blue. My second function is y is equal to one over x minus four. Now, y is equal to one over x minus four has an h value of four and a k value of zero. Now if we go back and look at our parent function, y is equal to one over x, that function has a vertical asymptote at x is equal to zero. And it has a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero. Now our second function, y is equal to one over x minus four, is the exact same graph, except every point on this graph is translated to the right four spaces. In fact, this graph has a new vertical asymptote at x is equal to four. So our h value provides us with a horizontal translation. And we translate every point on the graph, h units, and our asymptote has changed, and it is translated h units. Now let's look at our last function. Here we have y is equal to one over x minus four. This function has an h of zero and a k of negative four. Now if we compare this function to our parent function y is equal to one over x, notice that every point has been translated down or negative four units. In fact, this graph has a new horizontal asymptote at y is equal to negative four. So our k value being negative four has translated us downward four units, or has translated us vertically negative four units. Again, we have the exact same graph as y is equal to one over x, but every unit is translated downward, including our asymptote. So h and k have the effect of translating vertically and horizontally our parent function h is a horizontal translation, and k is a vertical one. So now let's try using all this information to graph a reciprocal function. Here we're given the graph y is equal to two divided by x minus four. Here we have an h value of four. Now an h value of four translates our function four units to the right, which means we have a vertical asymptote where x is equal to four. Here also, we have a k value of zero, because you can think of this as plus k. That means that we have a horizontal asymptote where y is equal to zero. 
And if I draw these asymptotes in, they will look something like that. Now our A value here is 2. 2 is positive, so I can expect to graph this in the upper right and lower left quadrants of our asymptotes. Now the last step to graphing this is selecting x values on both sides of our vertical asymptote, plugging them into this equation and finding y values. The x values that I'm going to choose are going to be 8, 6, and 5. The x values to the left of my vertical asymptote that I'm going to choose are going to be 3, 2, and 0. Now if I plug all these values into this equation, first I plug in 8, I'll have y is equal to 2 over 8 minus 4. And this is equal to 2 over 4 or 1 half. So my x is 8, my y is 1 half. If I plug in 6, I'll have y is equal to 2 divided by 6 minus 4. This is the same as 2 over 2, or 1. So my x is 6, my y is 1. Next I plug in 5. I'll have y is equal to 2 over 5 minus 4. And that's equal to 2 over 1, or just 2. Next I'm going to plug in 3 for x. I'll have y is equal to 2 over 3 minus 4. And that's the same as 2 over negative 1, or negative 2. If I plug in 2 for x, I'll have y is equal to 2 over 2 minus 4. That's equal to 2 over negative 2, or negative 1. And then lastly, I plug in 0 for x, I'll have y is equal to 2 over 0 minus 4. And that's the same as 2 over negative 4, or a negative 1 half. So I have my x and y values, and I can plot these. 8 and 1 half, 6 and 1, 5 and 2, 3 and negative 2, 2 and negative 1, and 0 and negative 1 half. Now I know this graph has to get closer to these asymptotes, so I'm going to connect these points with a smooth curve, and our graph should look something like that. So now that we know how to graph a reciprocal function, we have completed the tutorial on reciprocal functions.